AMD revealed previously unknown information about Zen 4 and Zen 4 X3D at ISSCC a few weeks ago. Not only do we finally know which process node is used for the second gen 3D recache, but further digging reveals a pretty big implication for its future. Without further ado, let's take a closer look at AMD's second gen 3D recache. Let's start with the facts. The second gen 3D recache used for Zen 4 X3D is actually produced in the same TSMC N7 node as the first generation. I expected N6 or N5, but the fact that it's still N7 shows how cost effective AMD's entire chiplet approach really is. The Ryzen 9 7950X3D is currently the most powerful CPU on the market, and all AMD had to do was take a 7950X and add a tiny cache chiplet produced in an old 7 nanometer process node. Kinda amazing if you ask me. AMD shared even more information as reported by Tom's Hardware, including the actual die size of the second gen chiplets. And here we have the next surprise. Even though the second gen cache chiplet still contains 64 megabytes of SRAM based L3 cache and has the same 4.7 billion transistors as the first gen chiplet, it's smaller in die size. AMD's first gen 3D cache chiplet, also called L3D for short, has 4.7 billion transistors on a 41 mm squared die which results in a transistor density of 150 million transistors per millimeter squared. The new second gen L3D chiplet is able to fit the same 4.7 billion transistors in a smaller 36 millimeter squared die, resulting in a higher 131 million transistors per millimeter squared, even though AMD is using the same process node. How are they doing that? The key factor for this die size reduction are the TSVs. TSV is short for through silicon via and you can think of them as tiny copper wires going through the silicon chip itself, connecting the base CPU chiplet with the cache chiplet sitting on top. There are TSVs used for data transfer and TSVs used for power supply. With everything AMD learned from Zen 3D, they were able to reduce the TSV signal area, which are the TSV's connection used to transfer data, by about 50%. This is a huge achievement. The result is a smaller L3 cache partition on the CPU chiplet because that's where those TSVs are located and correspondingly also a reduced area cost on the 3D recache chiplet itself. Just by creating a more space efficient TSV layout, AMD was able to shrink the second gen 3D recache chiplet while still using the same process node as the first generation. With only 36mm squared, the second gen L3D chiplet must be getting close to a perfect yield and as a result should be dirt cheap to produce, especially on the older N7 node. We are literally talking about a couple of dollars here at most. The system on integrated chip or SOIC packaging method that is used to connect the L3D chiplet with the CPU chiplet is most likely more costly than producing the cache chiplet itself. And even if we assume a $20 cost basis for the SOIC 3D packaging, in total the 3D vCache treatment shouldn't cost more than $25, a pretty good deal for AMD. Even though AMD managed to shrink the die size of the second gen cache chiplet, one question remains. Is it enough or is the cache chiplet still too large? Let me explain what I mean by that. AMD designed the first gen 3D VCAT in such a way that the L3D chiplet only sits above the L3 cache area of the CPU chiplet, but not above the parts where the CPU cores are located. The reason for this is something I talked extensively about in my last Zen 4 X3D video. Stacking a chip on top of another chip creates thermal problems, as it becomes harder to dissipate the heat away from the chip at the bottom. AMD still has to put some structural silicon above the CPU cores to even everything out, but these parts are not active and don't contain any transistors, reducing the thermal impact. The problem is that even though the second gen L3D chiplet is smaller in size compared to the first gen, it might not be small enough to fit only above the L3 cache area of Zen 4, because Zen 4 is using a 5 nanometer process node and has been shrunk significantly compared to Zen 3. If the cache chiplet can shrink at a similar pace as the CPU, it has to cover a larger area of the CPU chiplet. To figure out if that's the case, let's compare the area reduction of Zen 4 and Zen 3 to the area reduction of the second and first gen 3D vCache chiplets. As you can see, using TSMC's N5 process node, AMD was able to reduce the size of a Zen 4 CCD by about 18.5% compared to a Zen 3 CCD, even though Zen 4 doubled the L2 cache, added AVX512 and much more. If you compare it to the 3D vCache improvements, it's not that far off, but with only 12.2% size reduction, the cache chiplet does trail behind. A 41mm squared first gen L3D chiplet on top of a 
81 mm squared Zen 3 CCD covers less area than a 36 mm squared second gen L3 chiplet on a 66 mm squared Zen 4 CCD. To try and understand the effects of this, let's take a quick look at the difference between a CCD and a CCX. Because as you will see, even on Zen 3D, the cache chiplet did cover more than just the L3 cache of the CPU. CCD is short for CPU Core Die and describes the entire physical CPU chiplet. This includes I.O. areas for the Infinity Fabric, the System Management Unit and parts used for debugging. Within the CCD is the CCX, short for Compute Complex. The CCX is the part of the CCD that contains all the CPU cores and the shared L3 cache. If you take a look at Zen 3D and the first gen L3 chiplet, we can see that not only the L3 cache contained within the CCX is covered by the chiplet, but also parts of the extended CCD functionality, most likely the SMU and Infinity Fabric interconnect. With the knowledge that the first gen chiplet already covered more area than only the L3 cache on Zen 3D, and the fact that a Zen 4 CCD achieved a greater reduction in size than the second gen 3D cache chiplet, there is only one conclusion. The second gen L3D chiplet has to cover an even larger part of the Zen 4 CCD. But which parts are affected? Luckily, we don't have to guess because AMD did confirm it at the ISS CC presentation. On Zen 4 X3D, the 3D V cache chiplets now also cover the L2 cache of each CPU core. And not only that, AMD also moved the TSVs used for power delivery into the L2 cache area. On Zen 3D, power and data TSVs were all placed within the L3 cache with some small exceptions. On Zen 4, there is a clear division. Data TSVs within the L3 cache and power TSVs inside the L2 cache. It's a rather clever solution by AMD because while the cache chiplet is indeed covering more area, it still only covers cache. The CPU cores itself are not affected. But it also shows that AMD's second gen 3D V cache design is different than the first gen. In my opinion, this development shines light on a problem 3D stacking has to tackle in the future. The entire idea of using dedicated cache triplets is based on the fact that modern process nodes offer very bad ASRAM scaling. Producing the 3D V cache triplet in a 5 nanometer process node would only have a small impact on the final die size. And beyond 5 nanometer, there's almost no further area scaling. As a result, it's very hard to effectively reduce the die size of the 3D V cache chiplet. If this trend continues, at some point, the CPU chiplet is going to be smaller than the 3D V cache chiplet, a nightmare for thermals. Plus, if the 3D V cache chiplet actually covers the whole CPU chiplet, TCV connections have to be moved into even more areas of the CCD, creating new engineering challenges. What are possible workarounds for this problem? One solution could be to stack multiple smaller chiplets on top of the base CPU die, so they again only sit above the L3 cache. But this would further increase the distance of the base CPU chiplet to the heat spreader. As the stacks just get higher and higher, you could also try to flip the entire chip stack, basically putting the more power-hungry CPU chiplet above the cache chiplet. But then you have to route all the data and power lines through the cache chiplet, something you want to avoid. And upcoming design changes like backside power delivery could also completely alter chiplet configurations. There will be solutions, AMD and the competition are already working hard on solving these kinds of problems. In my last X3D video, some of you mentioned interesting concepts, for example like on-die water cooling. The future clearly belongs to modular chiplet design, but it's not an open road. There are many problems to overcome and the scaling disparity between Logic and cache chiplets is one of them. Let me know down in the comments below how you think these problems could be solved. I'm very interested in the solutions you come up with or things I might have missed. And if you are interested in a more in-depth look at the challenges of 3D stacking, check out my last video about Zen 4 X3D. I've had a persistent cough for the past two weeks. Luckily not COVID, but annoying anyways. Let's hope my voice will be back to normal very soon. I hope you found this video interesting, if you did, you know what to do, and see you in the next one.